Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and this is going to be my February monthly recommendations. Now the topic for this month was not another love story. In other words, books that are not romances. Now the monthly recommendations group, I'm sure you've heard of it, is hosted by Trina from Between Chapters and Kayla Rain and I will link both their channels down below. I wanted to tell you about seven authors who write books primarily for a female audience, but most of their books really are not romances. Uh, they are books that would be mostly of interest to women. Of course, there's nothing wrong with men reading them, but they do not have uh, romance as their main focal point in their stories. Now, one exception to that, one of the authors I'm going to talk about in a little bit is Debbie Makeover. She has both. She has some romances. Most of her romances, though, are very clean, uh, either like with an inspirational or Christian message. She also has quite a few books that are really not romances. They're just good family drama stories. So that's what I'm going to focus on today because I think probably a lot of people have a misconception that women's fiction is all romance. And that's really not true at all. There are some really excellent, wonderful books that are, you know, about families and about uh, communities and what's going on with the people and the friendships and so that's the kind of books that I wanted to tell you about today. Uh, this is probably my second favorite book series of all time. This is the Miss Julia series by Ann B. Ross. The first one is Miss Julia Speaks Her Mind. I also have a couple of others. Uh, this is the second book in the series, Miss Julia Takes Over. And then, because I happen to have it with me, this is a library book. This was the only Miss Julia book that I read in 2015. So I was showing this in my favorite books of 2015 video that I just did a few days ago. Uh, and I've not returned this back to the library yet. This is Miss Julia Stirs Up Trouble. I think this is book 14 in the series. There are currently 17 Miss Julia books. Uh, and then there's a novella that's an ebook only. And then the 18th book is due out in April. This is about Miss Julia, who is a woman of a certain age. You don't ever really know how old she is. And when the series opens, she has recently become widowed. Her late husband was a banker and was very controlling. And so she, while she lives in a very nice house, she's got a housekeeper and, um, and, and is involved in a lot of charity work and church work and things like that. She's always been under her husband's thumb. And so she's sitting there reflecting on how her life has been and what she's going to do moving forward when the doorbell rings. And at the door is a younger woman with a nine-year-old boy who begins to speak quickly and say, this is little Lloyd, you're going to have to take him now. I'm going to beauty school and runs, jumps in a car and speeds off and leaves. Leaving her with a little boy who she has no idea about and um and, and she's just like what <laughs> so long story short this child is her husband's illegitimate son the lady who dropped him off was her husband's mistress of many years and miss julia knew nothing of this woman or this boy uh apparently the whole town knew but she didn't know and so she begins to think how am I gonna how am I gonna save face what am I gonna do now well then she's faced with the problem of this young boy who's standing next to her looking up at her going hi you know and and the lady who's long gone <laughs> that's where it starts it, it just it just goes from there and that's just the beginning of the first book um, so it turns out that when she starts trying to find Little Lloyd's mother, she's been kidnapped. And so her and her housekeeper Lillian and Little Lloyd go off on a, uh, a hunt with the help of a private investigator to find Hazel Marie. And then it, it, it just goes from there. And with each book, Miss Julia gets herself into more adventures than any one person <laughs> should have she just she's just hilarious and she lives right across from the Presbyterian Church which is the church where she attends but of course she keeps a close eye out on everything that comes and goes you know everyone that comes and goes and she's just got her 
fingers and her nose and everybody's business but she's adorable and you just can't help but love her I have introduced the Miss Julia series to quite a few of my friends locally who have gone on and read all the books in fact some of them have finished the whole series and I still have about four including the one that comes out this year that I need to read so they're ahead of me and uh, it's just a wonderful series I love it so much my sister is the one who first told me about it I believe her friend Jan Janet was the one who introduced Miss Julia to her. So thank you, Janet. If you ever watch this video, thank you for telling us about Miss Julia because I love these books. They're just adorable. Now, I'm not sure how I first started reading Fanny Flagg. I really can't remember, but I, I think I just ran across an audiobook and I thought, oh, this looks interesting, and I picked it up. I want to say that this may have been the first one I ever read of Fanny Flagg. I'm not sure. She has quite a few. Most of her books are small town, southern humor, and this one in particular I love. This is actually the third in the Elmwood Springs series, but they're really all, they, each of the three books stand, can stand alone on their own. They just have some characters that cross over into each of the books. But this one, I, I read them in the exact opposite order. This was the first one that I read, and uh, I would recommend and reading them in the order I read them because I, I enjoyed them a lot. This is called Can't Wait to Get to Heaven. The second book is called Standing in the Rainbow and I gave away a paperback copy of this book in my 100 subscriber giveaway. First book in the series is called Welcome to the World Baby Girl. This is actually about a city girl who is related to the people who live in Elmwood Springs and so I of the three books I like this one the least and I think if I had read it first I might not have continued the series. That's why I don't usually recommend reading this one first. If you read this one first you will almost guarantee to be hooked on the characters and you will want to read all three. Uh, this is about an elderly woman, Aunt Elner, and she's probably in her 90s. And the story starts out, she is climbing up a fig tree to pick figs and falls. Well, she's rushed off to the hospital, and while she is in a coma, she believes that she has gone to heaven. So this book is told from her perspective and all the things that she's experiencing and all the people she's talking to while she is in heaven and the things she sees. and. I don't want to give spoilers, but then you also find out about what's going on with the people around her and what they're doing while she's in a coma, and it's it's just really, really fun. I just love this book. It's fabulous, and it's kind of a fantasy book, really, uh, but it's so cute, just adorable, and I, I just can't say enough good things about it. This, I believe, is Fanny Flagg's most recent book, and it's from 2013, so I hope she will have another book soon, but this is the All Girl Filling Station's Last Reunion, and this book has two different perspectives. It's some, uh, there is some historical fiction about female pilots in World War II, and then they are there's also part of the story takes place in the present time with some of the same characters that we met back in World War II and I believe if I recall it's been a while since I read it I believe it flips back and forth and there may be a little bit of romantic relationships in this but that's certainly not the main focus of the story at all and I, I found it a very enjoyable read as I recall within this book there's just a lot of family drama and some family secrets that are uncovered and different things like that so it's uh, it, it was very enjoyable in fact I don't remember enough about it to really tell you much about it I need to read this again if you have read and enjoyed any other Fanny Flag books you should pick this one up um, I don't necessarily recommend starting with this one but this is a very good book now Debbie Macomber is an author who has written in fact I believe she got her start in romances but the romances that she wrote in her early days were mostly of the uh, like the silhouette inspirational where they were uh, very clean no sex scenes but just good feel-good romances now I'd like to talk about two of her series that she has written in more recent years that uh, really are just wonderful family drama a lot of different types of relationships mother daughter there's friendships and uh, as well as you know romantic relationships but they're all just kind of mixed into a lot of other storylines 
So one of the series is the Blossom Street series. Now I grabbed this from the library and I couldn't remember which was the first one. This is actually the second one. The first book is called A Shop on Blossom Street and this is book two called A Good Yarn. I believe there's about ten of these Blossom Street books. The first two especially focus on the main character Lydia who is the owner of a yarn shop and then you meet other characters as they come in to the yarn shop and you get acquainted with them through the different knitting classes and things that she does. Some of the other books are about some of the other characters that we've met along the way. Sometimes those characters will be the main character in another book and so they're not all about Lydia although she's mentioned in most of them but there's a variety of main characters throughout the whole series. It's just a lot of, of good drama. Lydia is faced with some health issues so there's that. I believe there's like gambling issues that are in, that come into play. A lot of different issues that come up. Um, just a, a lot of different types of things happen and it's just they're just good life stories about people and you get to know these characters and you feel for them and you learn about their lives and all that they're going through and all the issues that they face. So I definitely recommend these books. Kind of along that same line is the Cedar Cove series. Now these all take place in the town of Cedar Cove. The title of each of the books is actually an address. This first one, 16 Lighthouse Road, is the home of Olivia Lockhart who is one of the main characters. And the way you know the order of the books is that the, um, for instance, 16 Lighthouse Road starts with the digit 1. And then the second book, whatever the address is, starts with the numeral 2 and so forth. So the third book starts with 3. And some of the books have different characters as the main characters because as it goes through you begin to meet people in the town and you learn about them and so again like the other series each book centers around one or two people in particular and what they're going through in their life. But then the other characters that you've met in the earlier books come into play. My favorite storyline in this series, which I think is just wonderful, just to give you an example, Olivia Lockhart, who's one of the main characters, she's a judge. And so she has a young couple that have two children. The children are like teen and tween age. And uh, this couple comes to her saying they want a divorce. Well, she believes, I guess, you know, without really saying it, she believes that this couple probably could work through whatever their issues are because whatever they're telling her uh, is their reason for getting a divorce uh, she thinks that they're really just not trying hard enough I guess I don't know but she doesn't say that in so many words but what she does I think she grants the divorce I, I can't remember if she just gives them a separation and while they're waiting for the divorce she tells them that because they're fighting about you know who's gonna keep the house she tells them that the kids keep the house and the parents each the parents have to get an apartment so while one of them's at the apartment the other parent is at the house and then vice versa but anyway I thought wow what a great idea because you know the parents were like well, well that's ridiculous you know that's really an inconvenient for us to have to move back and forth and she's like well so you expect your kids to do that and you're not willing to do that it's you that want the divorce. Why should your kids have to be inconvenienced? Because you're the ones that want the divorce. And I just thought, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so that's just one of the storylines that are in this series. And um, I, I definitely recommend the Cedar Cove series. There is a Hallmark TV series that is based on the series. And it's pretty good. I've watched some of them and I enjoyed them. I forget a lot of times to, to look it up whenever it's on. But, uh, but I really did enjoy this series. Most of these recommendations came to me through my sister and her group of friends. My sister's 10 years older than me and she has a, uh, some of her friends are retired teachers. And so I really appreciate them so much because I have really, really enjoyed so many of these and, uh, and I have them to thank for it. Another series that my sister and her friends told me about is the Elm Creek Quilt series by Jennifer Shiverini. This is the first one, The Quilter's Apprentice, and I have not collected these books. I simply have this one, really, so that I can give it to somebody. Um, 
I tend to do that since I go to a lot of book sales. If I find the first one in any of my favorite series, I will usually pick it up if it's, uh, you know, if I can get it for a great deal. So that if I'm telling somebody about the series, then I could say, here, here's the first one. Take this and read it. And if you like it, then get the rest from the library or, you know, go, go from there. And so I happen to have this. This is about, uh, basically, it starts out about two women. The younger one named Sarah and her husband are, um, they are living in a college town and having a hard time finding a, a, a good job. Sarah goes to interview with an older woman named Sylvia. Sylvia has, uh, is the owner of a very large mansion type family estate home that she has not lived in in quite some time. I think it's been empty for quite some time. Her sister was the last one who lived in it and her and her sister were estranged and so now she's had an offer on the place and she has come back to kind of clean out and get whatever she wants to get out of this house and so Sarah interviews with her and uh, so she hires Sarah to help her to kind of go through this house and clean everything out. Well long story short um, Sylvia is a master quilter and she's got a lot of skeletons in her closet and uh, just some different things that she doesn't really want to talk about at first but as her and Sarah get to be acquainted she starts to teach Sarah how to quilt so they decide in the long run to keep this estate and open a quilters retreat and there are a few other people in the town that they become friends with who go in on this venture with them and become the quilt instructors. So this is the very beginning of this Elm Creek Quilt series. And then a lot of the other books take place at the Elm Creek Quilts retreat and have to do with the people there at the retreat. As the series goes along, you get to know each of them and, and what they're going through in their life. Now, there are a few other books that are historical fiction but are still part of the series because as we learn about Sylvia and her heritage with this house, we get to go back in time and see her ancestors and how they built this house and what they went through prior to the Civil War when they hid slaves and became part of the Underground Railroad. And then some of the neighbors who lived nearby and how they all knew each other and those are really some of my favorite books in this series are the ones that go back in history and there's even one of the more recent ones that kind of looks into the future I have really enjoyed this series a lot I think I've read all of them but two and uh, I thoroughly recommend it one of the books from this series that goes back in time and is basically historical fiction is the Union Quilters and these are the ancestors of Sylvia from this book and what they did prior to and during the Civil War towards the war effort and I believe that in this book they make a quilt which is then raffled off uh, to support the um, the the soldiers so uh, so this is a very good book I enjoyed this a lot this is another series that I have really not ever heard anybody else talk about uh, other than my sister. She's the one that told me about these. I've got the first three and I believe there's seven books so far in this series. This is the Cobbled Quilt series by Marie Bostwick. Uh, the first one is A Single Thread. I have read it. The second one is A Thread of Truth. I have read it. And the third one I have not read, uh, and of course I haven't read the rest of them either. This is A Thread So Thin. Um, this series starts out, the main character in the first few books is Evelyn Dixon, and she moves from her former home in Fort Worth, Texas, to a town called New Bern, Connecticut, where she opens a quilt shop. And this is the story of her and her friends that she makes through running the quilt shop and all the drama that she goes through. Um, there some health issues come into play later on and uh, so different things that uh, that go on in this book. This is, these stories are uh, wonderfully written. Um, these stories have some wonderful friendships in them and I, I've just thoroughly enjoyed the first two and I'm looking forward to reading some more. Now I have shown these books before on my channel or whether you are elderly or not you may enjoy reading about the elderly and these books were written by Effie Leland Wilder there are five of them I only have four but she wrote them all at the age of 85 and older they are a 
fictional account of her experiences in her senior assisted living facility and they're adorable oh my goodness this is another series that I brought to church and started loaning them out to some of my friends at church and uh, several of them have have read all four of these I have not been able to find my own copy of the fifth one our library has it and at some point I'm gonna check it out and read it I just learned about it not too long ago uh, but let me tell you the names of them this is out to pasture but not over the hill this is over what hill notes from the pasture this is older but wilder more notes from the pasture and one more time just for the fun of it and then the fifth one is called oh my goodness so my mother actually is the one who first found these books I believe they were I don't know if they were originally published by guidepost but guidepost has published at least one edition of them and um, my mother is the first one that told me about these and I started reading them she said oh you have to read these books they're just so cute and I have just loved them I don't know how many copies I've had of them because I may have these for a little while and then I'll give them to somebody. These make wonderful gifts and I don't know how many copies of these books I have given away because they're so cute. And uh, so right now I happen to have in my possession uh, all four of them but I will probably give these away at some point because I love sharing them with people. Again this author is Effie Leland Wilder and I believe she has passed away now. She wrote all of her books at the age of 85 and older. All right, one more author I'd like to talk about is Lucy Maud Montgomery. Now, you, that may ring a bell to you because she's the author of Anne of Green Gables. She wrote quite a lot of books. I have, I think I have read just about everything that was ever published from Lucy Maud Montgomery. The majority of them are all children's and YA books. Several different series, several different standalones, and several different books of short stories were published after her death. There is one book that is considered an adult book. It is called A Tangled Web. Now, I've read this a couple of times, and I loved it so much. I told my mom about it. I insisted that she read it. She didn't really like it, so you may not like it either. But let me just tell you about it. This is about two families, two clans, basically, that are uh, that have all, they're, they're linked together in that they each seem to marry the other. They, the Darks and the Penhallows, those are the families. The story starts out with the, the matriarch of the clans, Aunt Becky, is, uh, she's getting older. She's decided that it's time for her to decide who she is going to bequeath her most prized family heirloom to. And this is a legendary brown jug that everybody in the family is wanting. Everybody's hoping that, that they will be the recipient of this brown jug. And you wouldn't believe all the stuff going on between these two families. And so we learn about some of the individuals in particular throughout the story. Then by the end, we are going to learn the destination of this brown jug and what Aunt Becky is going to do with it. So I was completely entertained by this book. I, I think I'm ready to read it again because I don't even remember now how it ends, but I just remember loving it. And you know, I, I've loved everything that Lucy Maud Montgomery has written, but this is her only adult book. There's nothing in it that a younger person couldn't read. It's very clean. It's just that its target audience was adults. So I would recommend that you look this up and read it. It's really quite wonderful. So those were seven female authors who have written some wonderful books that are not romances. And I hope you will look up some of these. Let me know if you have read any of these. Uh, maybe you've read some other different books by some of these authors that you uh, have enjoyed. So I guess that's it for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.